हेलो अरुण नमस्कार राजकृष्णा दिस साइड सो लेट्स सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम विच इज फ्रॉम द गॉस सीडल मेथड इन न्यूमेरिकल मेथड्स सो वी नीड टू सॉल्व दिस सिस्टम ऑफ इक्वेशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ गॉस सीडल मेथड सो वी हैव बीन गिवन थ्री इक्वेशंस ओके सो द फर्स्ट स्टेप व्हिच विल बी देयर विल बी टू चेक whether the coefficient of leading diagonals are the greatest ones or not what i mean that uh, for that uh, let's write this in the form of ax equals to b so if i write uh, this in the form of ax plus b this is part of step number 1 so then in that case what will be your a the coefficient matrix so that will be 27 6 and minus 1 1 1 and 54 6 15 and 2 and what will be the capital x the matrix which contains the unknowns which are x1 x2 and x3 and b will be your matrix which contains the constant terms now this is a coefficient matrix in this matrix uh, you have to check whether it is diagonally dominant or not okay so for checking that what are the condition for the diagonal dominant matrix so in that case your a11 should be greater than equal to the sum of the other two which are a12 and a13 similarly because a11 a22 and a23 are part of diagonals part of leading diagonals so a22 should also be greater than equal to a21 plus a23 and similarly a Three three should be greater than equal to a three one and a three two. If this is satisfied, the given matrix is diagonally dominant. Let's check in this case. So we have twenty seven, which is obviously greater than six plus one, which is seven. First row it is satisfied. For the second row, we check. you have 1 as a22 and uh, the sum of the other two are 55 in this case this condition is not satisfied because one is far less than 55 and what about uh, the third one in that case you have again 2 and on the other hand you have 21 so again it is not being satisfied so the given uh, coefficient matrix is not diagonally dominant so we'll have to make it diagonally dominant how can we do so we have to choose equation in such a way equation number 1 2 3 in such a way that in equation number 1 the coefficient of the first term coefficient of first term or the coefficient of uh, first unknown that is better thing to say should be greatest and in self we have to check uh, in second equation the coefficient of second unknown which is x2 in this case should be greatest we have to uh, take third equation in such a way that the coefficient of the third unknown is greatest what i am saying that if you look at the first equation currently then x1 is the first unknown 
and its coefficient is greatest obviously 27 is uh, greater so we can take this as equation number one and also you can see the condition was satisfied and for equation number two we will have to take not the second which uh, one which you are seeing right now but the this one the third one which you are seeing because in this case you can see if you check the condition 15 will be greater than 6 plus 2 which is 8 and the rest is the third equation which again 54 is greater than 2 fine so if you take equation in such a way then this condition will automatically be satisfied you can check okay fine so when you have done that your uh, matrix is diagonally dominant you can move to step number two <sighs> wherein you have to write uh, from the first equation you have to write x1 in terms of the other two other things you have from the second equation write x2 in the term of uh, other parameters so from the first equation I can write x1 equals to 1 upon 27 take all other things to the other side so 85 minus 6 x2 plus x3 I can write my x2 as 1 divided by Fifteen, because my second equation is this from here I have to generate x2 expression so this is uh, 1 divided by 15 and then 72 minus 6 times x1 minus 2 times x3 and if I generate some space here so I get some space for x3 which is from this so that will be equal to 1 by 54 110 minus x1 minus x2 okay If I can copy this to the next page, I think I have successfully done that. So these are the values of your x1, x2, x3 uh, slightly messy looking but okay. These are the values of x1, x2 and x3. Now moving towards step number 3 which will be your iterations okay. Because it's a Gauss Seidel method so the feature of the gauss seidel method is uh, the we always take the recent updated value okay in case of jacobi we take uh, we don't uh, refer to the recent updated value but the main feature of the gauss seidel method is we take the recent updated value so but to start with we don't know uh, anything about x1 x2 x3 and because we need to find it so let's take x1 as in order to calculate x1 we will have to take x2 
as zero okay and same is to for x3 and that is only for the calculation of x1 for the first iteration because i can't calculate uh, because uh, x2 x3 are variables i need to have some value so because i don't know value so let uh, both of them be equal to zero so from here i can calculate from this equation let's name it 1 2 and 3 so i can now calculate it as 1 by 27 times 85 so you have got this equal to 85 by 27 whose value i have to calculate using calculator so 85 divided by 27 so this is 3.148148 now x2 value for the first iteration is 1 by 15 72 minus 6 10 now x1 is there what I told uh, is in Gauss Seidel method we take the recent value so x1 will not take 0 here we will take the recent value which you have obtained which is 3.148148 but x3 we have no idea so we can take that equal to 0 so this will be your okay fine let's make ink a bit lighter so this is 1 by 15 uh, let's calculate this so this is 1 by 15 inside that I have 72 minus 6 times 3.148148 so this is 3.540741 coming to the x3 value which will be 1 by 54 and uh, 110 minus x1 value we all know the recent value of x1 is 3.148148 recent value of x2 is 3.540741 so your x3 value is Uh, this is uh, 1 by 54 sorry uh, 1 by 54 okay 1 by 54 and inside I have 110 minus 3.148148 minus 3.540741 so this is coming out to be equal to 1.913169 so we have done uh, enough for the first iteration value now this was the first iteration let me write this this was your iteration number 1 now iteration number 2 iteration number 2 for that again we need the value of x1 I am writing in the power this uh, bracket 2 that means for the second iteration ok so that you can distinguish clearly so this will be equal to 1 by 27 85 minus 6 times x2 
6 times x2 we will take 3.540741 plus x3 will take 1.91 3169 okay so now calculate this so this is uh, uh your values are 1 by 27 and inside bracket i have 85 minus 6 times 3.54 0741 plus 1.913169 so this is uh, the value of x1 for the second iteration we are getting is 2.432175 okay now x2 for the second iteration will be 1 by 15 72 minus 6 times the recent value of x1 is that we have obtained for the second iteration which is 2.432175 minus 2 times x3 that we have to take from previous iteration which is 1.913169 so let's calculate this again So this is 1 by 15 and inside this I have 72 minus 6 times 2.432175 minus 2 times 1.913169. So this is a uh, 3 point x2 for the second iteration is 3.572041 okay so i will have to get to the other page for the third iteration sorry third value x3 for the second iteration and that would be equal to uh 1 by 54, 110 minus x1 minus x2. 1 by 54, 110 minus x1 minus x2. Again, if I can copy this because this will be needed in the next iteration also. So x3 value is uh, 1 by 54, 110 minus x1 value, x2 value we have to subtract one such drawback. So x1 value we got as uh, 2.432175, 2.432175, okay, let's use paper to write so x1 value i got previously as 2.432175 and x2 value i got as 3.572041 okay so this i will have to use so 110 minus x1 value is 2.5 Four three two one seven five minus the x two value is three point five seven two zero four one. Fine. So let's calculate this. So. One by fifty four inside I have hundred and ten minus two point four 
टाइम सॉरी टू पॉइंट फोर थ्री टू वन सेवन फाइव माइनस थ्री पॉइंट फाइव सेवन टू जीरो फोर वन सो दिस इज वन पॉइंट एक्स थ्री वैल्यू इज वन पॉइंट नाइन टू फाइव एट फोर एट फाइन दिस इज करेक्ट एक्स फोर सॉरी नाउ वी हैव टू मूव दिस वॉज द एक्स थ्री वैल्यू फॉर द सेकेंड आइट्रेशन नाउ फॉर द थर्ड आइट्रेशन यू हैव टू स्टार्ट कैलकुलेटिंग थर्ड आइट्रेशन so the value of uh, x1 for third iteration will be 1 by 27 85 minus 6 times x2 so the x2 value was uh, 3.572041 and uh, what is the value of the recent x3 which we have obtained That is one point nine two five eight four eight. Okay, now let's calculate it. So this is equal to uh one by twenty seven, and inside this I have uh eighty five minus six times three point five seven two zero four one plus. One point nine two five eight four eight. Okay, so this is we are getting as two point four two x one. We are getting as two point four two five six eight nine. Okay, so this is matching from the previous up till one decimal place. And now the x two for the third iteration will be equal to one by fifteen seventy two minus six times two point four two five six eight nine. We'll taking the recent value minus two times x three x three from the previous iteration, which is one point nine two five eight four eight. So let's go back. And calculate one by fifteen, and inside I have seventy two minus six times two point four two five eight nine minus two point sorry two into one point nine two five eight four eight. So this is three point five seven two eight six four. If I start matching with the previous one, uh, this is matching up till two decimal places. Okay, up till three decimal places rather. Three point five seven two zero four one was the previous one. Okay, and this we have got as our recent one. Uh, if I check with my final answer, which I have got with me, uh, this is okay. Th they have given three point five seven three. Okay. Let's see uh, uh, for the X three also. Then we'll decide. So for X three, let's zoom this. So for x three, for the third iteration will be one by fifty four, hundred and ten minus x one value from the recent one, which is two point four two five six eight nine, and uh, minus x two also the recent one five point seven two eight six four. So. Calculating this, so 
which is 1 by 54 110 minus 2.425689 minus 3.572864 so this value is 1.92 1 1.925953 and 1.925 is what we have got previously as you can see and in the solution they have given 1.926 yes they can give because if you approximate this value uh, till three decimal places then if it uh, the fourth decimal place number it is if it is five or greater than five you can write the third decimal place as one more okay that is a uh, rounding off sort of thing so and what about the x1 value x1 previously we got as 2.43 okay and they have given 2.42 Okay, I think this uh, uh, three iterations are enough to give out our values of x1, x2 and x3. The x1 value which I am writing is uh, 2.4 uh, in answer also they have given up to three decimal places to so 2.42 will write normally after 5 you can see 6 so we can round off this 5 to 6 okay because 1 greater than 5 is 6 okay. i hope you know how to round off uh, and the x2 value is 3.572 and after 2 it is 8 because after 2 it is 8 uh, so we can uh, round this off to 3 so 3.573 and x3 value 1.925 okay 1.9258 in that case 1.529 in this case in both the cases we can round off this and rounding off is done for the third decimal place uh, number only so that will become again 6. So if I match again 2.4 to 6, uh, 3.573 and 1.926, these are correct up to 3 decimal places. Okay. And these are the approximated value rounded off. You can write that. fine so this is uh, what we had done today the three iteration which it took uh, for us uh, if i were to revise this uh, then in the first we saw how uh, what is the uh, that concept of uh, this uh, diagonally dominant uh, because that was important and it says that from the next time you don't need to write all this stuff always check that coefficient of x1 from this first equation should be the largest the second equation whichever you are choosing in that the coefficient of x2 should be largest third equation whichever you are choosing in that coefficient of x3 should be the largest then we moved on to the iterations so first we write x1 uh, alone x2 alone and x3 alone so then we started with the iterations uh, so for the first iteration I have to take x2 x3 0 in order to calculate x1 and then while calculating x2 because I already knew the value of x1 so I use that but x3 still I don't know so I took that as 0 while calculating x3 I knew the value of x1 x2 so I use that from second iteration onwards, whatever is the reshaped value, I use that. So for calculating x1 for the second iteration, I know x1, x2, x3 from previous iteration, I will use that. Okay. 
and you will keep on doing this until you get uh, it uh, matched up to uh, three or four decimal places if it is not uh, told otherwise follow the uh, condition or situation given in the question okay and uh, you can round it off uh, for the last decimal place uh, okay so that's it uh, from my side for more such problem you can visit that playlist which i have made iterative techniques and interpolation for this particular chapter thanks again